My name's Gwynham Lewis and I'm a player coach for Clenetley Warriors. Uh, G-W-I-L-Y-M Lewis, like the island. Uh, well, Gwilm, I believe you're sort of the brains behind <laughs> unified rugby. Um, can you tell me sort of the history of it from the start? Well, from a, from a Warriors perspective, um, it started off in a day centre for people with learning disabilities. Um, and they got challenged by a side that was in the Swansea Gladiators nearby. So they were, there was already a side. Some of the people worked there. They challenged the centre to get up a side. Um, that was about 17 years ago now, and it's, it's built from there. What, what does rugby offer um, to this sort of thing? Um, rugby's got a whole sort of culture that's uh, all about inclusion. inclusion. Um, there's a lot of sort of team emphasis because you rely on specialist people. You've got to have a scrum half, you've got to have a second row. And if it was, so whoever that person is, they're in, they've got an important cog in the wheel. They've got their own role and it gives everybody a, a big role like that. It's got the culture of uh, running all in and a good social culture around it as well. And there's a lot of respect for anyone who's prepared to play rugby. It's a big physical game. So uh, there's a lot of combination of things to bring it together. It uh, means a lot of respect to the boys who do it. You say 17 years ago that, mm. that the Warriors started. Was there anything much happening before that? And then sort of how has it developed since then? There was, um, there was a little bit of a side in Bridgend, and, uh, but that fizzled out quite quickly, I think. And the Swansea side challenged us. And for us, it was um, the first couple of years, we just played them once a year. And then it, it sort of built. We started playing work sides. We got the seven fixtures. And now we played 14, before we come up here, we played 14 fixtures this year, which is um, which qualify us for WIU funding is what some of the second team's league programme is. So that's a sort of a full season now. And uh, obviously the Bumbles and now hopefully the clan will be uh, regular fixtures for us as well in between all the sort of club sides and work sides that we already play. How, how many teams are there? I mean, do you have to go abroad to play or is there quite a big sort of culture of this and a kind of big sort of format of it mm. in Wales? Um, no, there's a two sides in Wales, and then the one side in England, the one side now in Scotland. There's a side in New Zealand, and there's a couple of colleges in Australia and Japan that have used it. But it's very intermittent. But the whole point is sort of not to have, not to just be about special fixtures with the the Bumbles or the Gladiators, but to play regular teams. So the boys, are, you know, it's not a segregated thing like perhaps Special Olympics, where it's a special thing for people with learning disabilities. It's with and against able-bodied, for want of a better term. Rugby, and then that's, that's where the respect and inclusion and, and people see people as individuals instead of uh, Special Olympic athletes and not really know what sort of levels involved. These boys are tackling and being tackled and, and out there up and again. So it's not about how many fixtures, yeah, obviously we want more teams like this and it's great, but it's about having the fixtures against Bertos RFC or um, Pontypridd RFC or whoever it is, those regular games that are sort of bread and butter of it. So where do you want to see it going? Obviously, we've got this sort of Tri Nations tournament today. Where do you want to see things progress from here? Brilliant to have the Tri Nations team and, and for us to come together and we all learn off each other and, and stuff. But I'm, what I'm hoping is, I, I know the Bumbles are starting to do it, but the clan will play the Kilmarnock veterans. They'll play, um, they go, you know, they go for Jed Forest seniors or um, Hoik Forts or whatever and start having their own fixture list. And the more sides like that that start doing that, then the more almost a, it won't be a special thing, there'll just be another rugby side in you know, part of rugby culture. What kind of barriers do you face to, to that happening? Um, people have people got prejudices, not necessarily nasty prejudices, but they're sort of, um, I think people are a bit nervous. You know, I, I know I was when I started work as a support worker years ago. They, they don't know quite what to expect, you know, and you sort of say, all right, we're going to do this rugby thing. And some people think it's going to be all very sort of... Um, school school trippy type thing you know pack lunches and everybody behaving and and other people don't know what to expect at all and think it's going to be chaos and it's just not that different to any others so it is chaos but just not different to any other rugby clubs chaos so in terms of the matches is there any difference at all to to the rugby 15s that that we see every day um we play passive scrums which is what veterans tend to play um that's partly because of the experience so we, we couldn't have boys play in their first second third game of rugby against a veteran side and also um, with Down syndrome, we've had players with Down syndrome, it causes a uh, fusion in the back of the neck and it'd be dangerous to scrimmage. So, but apart from that, it's, uh, it's exactly the same game. Sometimes, sometimes we sort of might just say, look, this person's going to play their first game. Can we, you know, can we not smash seven hells out of him in the first two minutes or stuff? But, but it's, you know, it's the same game and when you see it, you might, you know, if you didn't know, sometimes you wouldn't even, you know, you, would, you wouldn't realise. 
obviously in Scotland this is the, the plan or the first team to have done this and just been running for a year but, but for you in Wales what sort of changes have you seen in the 17 years that, that the Warriors have been around? We see lots of uh, our fixture has developed and, and we see lots of clubs you know we've got a, a regular fixture we've got a trip to Cardiff we play a side up there when the internationals are on and we've become an established sort of part of the Tlenetli scene um, and West Wales scene so that, that's, that's the sort of main development for us um, and people just sort of uh, a much it's not such a big thing anymore you know it, it, it used to be um, you know we used to, people sort of they can uh, partly they can see the videos or they can see the website but they'll know someone who's, who's played or no, or has played against and so it's easy you don't have quite so many questions and people are sort of yeah just a bit more of a with, with how it works in terms of the Welsh Rugby Union, is there, you know, do you get support from, from those kind of areas? Yeah, we, we, we get a bit of support from the union. I mean, um, we don't need loads of support. All we really need is um, some kit um, referees and such like. They helped get um, our new kit is uh, partly organised through the WIU, hence it's under armour. Um, we're talking to them about possibly putting on some exhibition matches in the di within the different regions and people being able to see it. But... Um, you know, we don't need a lot of support, so they, are, they don't have a huge input. We're affiliated to our local district union, um, so we get membership and uh, insurance through that, but like any other club. How important is it to the guys involved? What, what changes have you seen in, in the individuals and in the team as, as you've gone by? The, the confidence levels are the thing. You know, um, you know, we played today, they had a Tongan, Tongan international. You know, we come up against big players. When they start off, they're phased. They realise that, you know, old adage but if you take their legs they can't go anywhere they, they they work out that they can knock people over sometimes or they can run around them um they have to sort of give the odd speech or something sometimes or accept medals it's just all about confidence and uh, you know meeting other people different different experiences being piped out today face the hacker in new zealand you know, just little things the confidence is is something else and it comes off the field as well they, they it, you can see it on field but you can see it they're more happy to talk to people um, they tend to get better spoken and things. Yeah, it, it, that's the big one, the confidence. And for you and all the volunteers and everybody involved, what, what do you get from it? Because you can see everybody here is enjoying it. Yeah, well, exactly. It's, it's you know sometimes people sort of talk as though we're um, as though uh, <laughs> as though oh yo there's good you are you know, going there's good you are going up to Scotland for the weekend. Uh, <laughs> out drinking or going to New Zealand to watch the Lions. I, you know, I'm not doing it. Because to, to help people, I'm doing it because I enjoy it, and we all enjoy it, and it's, it's just great fun. It you know really is. Obviously, it's nice to sort of see people's confidence coming up and stuff. At the end of the day, it's a rugby trip, and I love a rugby trip, and uh, yeah, it's great. It's really good fun. We were speaking to Jamie about perhaps you know he's he's quite keen to build this into more of a festival of rugby. Is that mm. and, and also talking as well about perhaps doing a kind of series like the, the World Seven series. Mm. Is that the sort of ambitions that you have as well? I, I think that'd be brilliant as long as it runs a song alongside. The clubs having regular fixtures against normal teams. I think something like that can really push because it's a, a chance for everyone to get together. People to see it. It gets the media back in. It, get, it gets the sponsors out, and it just sort of pushes the level up that in a way that you can't do by playing a, a village second side. You know. So yeah, I, as long as they run in tandem, I think that'd be brilliant. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Do you want anything on the individual teams <coughs> of players or anything? Well, should we should maybe ask you now that you've finished. Actually, your yeah. tournament. We'll have a quick chat about the games. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, two games done. Um, how has the day gone for you? <laughs> hard, hard. Um, I, we, we were sort of hoping that perhaps the Scottish side would be a bit um, more naive than they were. And we just about managed to scrape that. And I think it took too much out of us alongside last night to sort of, you know, I think the Bradford coming on fresh then was just, uh, yeah, a little bit more than we could handle. So it's good. At least we managed to win one game. Um, wouldn't like to have been whitewashed. But the boys played really well, which is always important. Um, and you know, it's been a great experience coming up. Um, yeah, boys played well. You can't ask for more than that. We all did our best. Perhaps we shouldn't have gone out for quite so long last night, but you know, here we are. It's all part of it, though. Yeah, it's all part of it, exactly. Yeah. Great, thank you very much.